Hi, I'm Todd Knopp. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm on Disney Cruise Line's Marvel Day at Sea to do a presentation for Meet the Marvel Masters. So we got the presentation on film and uh, we're going to switch over to that right now so you can check out and see how it turned out. Well, a very good afternoon, true believers here aboard the Disney Magic. Who's having a great Marvel Day at Sea? <laughs> to see all of you join us here today in the Buena Vista Theater. First, a little introduction. My name is Corey. I'm part of the Crew Staff Entertainment team in charge of all the fun family stuff happening around the ship. And let me tell you something. I have the absolute privilege to introduce to all of you one marvelous person. You see, this gentleman here, he is one of the fantastic Marvel comic book artists that puts together these fantastic illustrations to tell the stories of some of our favorite superheroes. And speaking of super, I want you all to do me a favor, put your hands together, give a super introduction and welcome to the man himself, it's Todd Knob! Hi, hello! Welcome, thanks so much for joining us here at Marvel Day at Sea. Thanks for coming to my presentation. I am honored to be a Marvel comic book artist. My name is Todd Knock. I'm, I'm gonna give you my origin story. Does, do we all know what an origin story is? Yeah. It's like how Peter Parker became Spider-Man or how Steve Rogers became Captain America. And so I'm gonna tell you my origin of how I became a Marvel Comics comic book artist. So, uh, I am mostly known for drawing Spider-Man. I've drawn a lot of Spider-Man comics. This is one of my most recent uh, Spider-Man illustrations from a series called Spider-Man, or Spidey. This is Spidey Schools Out. This is a teenage Spider-Man in an all-new sub-universe of the Marvel Universe, where we get back to the original teenage Peter Parker. So, I am a huge Spider-Man fan. I discovered Spider-Man at age four, and I was a fan instantly. He was so mysterious and so cool, and I, I've been a big fan ever since. And I grew up in the 80s, so I got to discover the Marvel Universe through cartoons like The Fantastic Four, The Incredible Hulk, and Spidey, and, or Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And I'll be showing you some of my other Marvel comic covers here as I share my origin story. And you might recognize a lot of these characters. So uh, I, I grew up, loving Marvel Comics characters uh, through the cartoons, but the cartoons weren't enough. I needed to learn more about who, who is Iron Man, who is Thor, who are the X-Men. So at age 13, I started buying Marvel Comics, and I started to uh, discover a whole bigger universe, lots more stories, and get to, getting to know the characters better, and, and I always tuned in month after month to get the latest issue. And I always loved to draw. Earliest memories of drawing of scribbling in a circle, going hamburger, hamburger, around age three, hamburger, hamburger. So either I was A, drawing a picture of a hamburger, or B, giving my mom my lunch order. I think it was A, I think it was A. So, I love drawing my favorite uh, cartoon characters and superheroes, and when I was in high school, mid-1980s, a great time to be in high school. Freshman in high school, my buddy, back in Texas, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, my buddy J.D. Binkley says, Tom, you're always drawing, and you're always reading superheroes. Have you ever tried to make your own comic book? And that had never occurred to me. I can make my own comic book? Do you have to have like some sort of training or a license to do this? So I started just to make up my own characters and make up my own stories, and I realized this is so much fun. I get to create a world. I get to build a world with these characters, my own created, my own creations, my own characters I was making up. Any of you can do it. Are, are, we, are there any other artists? Anyone out here who likes to draw? I see some hands. Awesome, you can make your own worlds. You can make your own characters, and that's the fun of it. I realized this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. But how do I do this? So I just looked at my favorite comic books. Oh, pardon me, Black Panther and the X-Men. I looked at my favorite comic books and studied what the masters did. I just kept practicing, kept trying to understand what they did till graduated high school and I went to art school. I studied commercial art and graphic design and I was able to utilize what I was learning there. The legendary Stan Lee on the cover of Marvel's two-in-one with many of his creations. An honor to get to draw the late great Stan Lee. And I, uh, so I, I, I utilized the things I was learning at Art Institute towards drawing comic books. This information applies to comic books because I utilized how, how to draw the figure. I utilized how to design and how to tell a story. And I'm going to be showing you how I do tell a story visually here coming up really soon. Just a couple of more big images. It's one of my favorite shots doing a comic book 
ad adaptation of Marvel Comics. Does anyone recognize what, what movie this scene might have come from? Go ahead and shout it out. Civil War, yes, the big battle on the tarmac in Berlin. This was so much fun to draw. It took a lot of time to draw a lot of detail on those costumes, but so much fun. So I started to send my samples out. I got to meet Marvel Comics editors and do tryouts. Finally, I got a chance to someone give me a break in the industry. I worked for a smaller publisher, then another publisher, and then Marvel uh, hired me in 2006 to draw Spider-Man. And they hired me to draw two issues, and immediately they bumped it up to three issues. Can you draw seven issues? Todd, we need you for 10 issues. I kept getting more and more work until I was working for them regularly. And I've been doing that now for about 13 years. I've been a Marvel Comics artist, and I gotta tell you, it's a dream come true. From going as a 15 year old kid who loved to read comics to now a something a little bit older than that <laughs> kid who gets to draw the comics, it's a dream come true and so much fun. So I'm gonna show you how I draw a comic, or the process, I should say. So first I get a script, it's much like a movie script where it says action dialogue, action dialogue. So this is a scene from Spidey Schools Out and it's from issue six where something's weird is going on with Iron Man. Why is he wanting to fight Spidey? And who are these other iron people with him? So we have repulsor rays coming in and Spidey's jumping around and Genki is being taken captive and, and uh, the, the Iron Man and his cronies are trying to escape and uh, Glory Grant is trying to help Spidey out and now Spidey's on to do his, uh, put his plan into action. So I do it all in sketches. And when my editor approves that, I go to the pencil artwork where I tighten up all the detail lines in pencil. So my editor has a better idea of what the, what the page will look like. So in case they say, oh, could you make Spider-Man's eyes a little bigger or a little smaller, or could you add more webs or take some webs away? It gives the editor an opportunity to kind of throw some edits in there in the early stages. Once this is approved, I go in with my pen and inks and I make all those lines crisp and clean. So that when they get scanned into to the computer, they, they uh, for, for printing, they're all nice, clean, not sketchy, blurry, gray graphite lines. They're all crisp and clean. It makes it really easy for the colorist. My good friend, Rochelle Rosenberg, who colors most all of my uh, Marvel stuff now, she can come in and do all the colors in Photoshop where she can add light up lasers and she can do tricks here with the webs. And then this will be the final page that goes to the printer when the, uh, the letterer will put in all the word balloons and the sound effects, the shakals, kazams, and the flips. We all know Spidey is what his sound effect is, flip, flip, flip. So uh, this is pretty much what I do page after page after page. And it's so much fun because every page is different because every story is different. So I get to live and, and, and get to know these characters. They almost become my friends because I'm working with them day in and day out. So me and Spidey, we're pretty tight. <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to come over here and do a live art demo for you and show you how I draw Spider-Man, or at least Spider-Man's face. And this piece, we will be raffling off, so make sure you hold on to that raffle ticket. Corey and his crew will be uh, doing that raffle. As I share my, um, my, my work process, uh, I, Corey will be uh, opening it up for a Q&A in, in just a moment. So, if you have any questions, make sure you have them ready. And so I'll go ahead and have a seat over here. And I'll be projecting this onto the screen, I believe, so you'll be able to see. see ah, there we are. So let me uh, turn this over a little right side up here. So I start with a nice oval here for, for the head. This, these are tricks I learned in my life drawing classes. When I was a little kid, I thought you had to put every line down perfectly the first time you put pen to paper. It's a very frustrating process for a nine-year-old because you make one mistake with your pen, you can't erase, you can't go back. But as I got through to art classes in high school and in college, I learned, oh, we, 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 we break it down, we sketch it out. There's a, there's a method and a procedure to go through. There are guidelines I can put in to make sure the eyes are in the right place. So I find the center of the head here, and this is Spidey's eye line where his eyeballs will be. Even though we won't see his eyeballs, that's pretty much where his eyeballs will be. And his nose would go here, and his mouth would go there. So I start to break down the science of a human head, even though it's a little more stylized than a realistic life drawing. It gives an idea. So we got the neck muscles. Now, once I kind of get the, the, the shapes roughed in, I can start adding those all important spidey mask details. 
So I, I figure out the white lenses, which would go over his eyes. So since I know where his eyes are, I know his lenses will fit perfectly over his eyes in the right place. So it looks a little more believable. And then I got to put that black outline that goes around his lenses. And they come up to a point at the top. Took a lot of practice to study and get, and, and get these shapes just right to make his lenses look like what all the other great Spider-Man artists that I was a big fan of studied how they did it and, and learned the shapes and learned how to do the web pattern. When I was a kid, I thought, how do Steve Ditko and John Romita Sr. and John Romita Jr. and Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson, how did these guys know where how to draw the, these webs? They looked so hard. So I had to practice and learn the, sh learn the pattern. So it's like, uh, like like one of those little oscillating fans in summertime when it gets too hot and you don't want to run the AC all day, you, you turn on one of those little oscillating fans It has the wire, wire mesh. It's kind of a little bit like that. So I start with that and, and then I, I bring the circles around for the cross webs. And these will be my guidelines for when I go to the inking stage. I will be coming up on the Q&A here pretty quick. Once I start inking, we can do Q&A while I draw. <clears throat> I'd love to have your interaction. If there are any questions you might have, so now, now that looks that looks pretty much like Spidey. If I left it there, most anyone who's familiar with Spidey would go, "Yeah, that, that, that looks pretty much like Spidey." You're heading in the right direction. Well, let's clean up the line work and bring it home. I gotta say, Tyler, it's almost like you did that in like fast forward. You did that so amazingly and so quickly, right, everyone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> Maybe 13 years. You know, uh, just to start off our, our Q&A here, and feel free, friends, if you have any uh, questions you'd love to ask our amazing Marvel comic artist, uh, one question I'm sure you get all the time, uh, what is your favorite Marvel movie? I imagine you probably see them uh, as any fan would out there, right? I do, I do. I love the Marvel movies. I love how all the stories are interconnected and how they built up to the Infinity War and beyond. Uh, I have to say... My favorite movie is Infinity War because it gives me all the heroes in one movie. So much action, so much comedy. I love Infinity War. That's probably my favorite. So today, we'll see. We'll wait to see. Uh, maybe Captain Marvel or Endgame might uh, <laughs> might topple Infinity War from my top spot. It might just topple the box office too. Right? You know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about, everyone. Uh, so this would be a great opportunity if anyone out there has any questions they'd love to ask our uh, Marvel comic artist. Feel free, uh, put your hand high in the air and I'll be making my way around the theater here to get some of those great questions out there. I'm going to start right here and make my way across. Uh, do me a favor, uh, tell Todd, what is your name? Um, Eva. Eva. Hi, Eva. Tell us, what's your question? Um, did you ever meet Stan Lee? Oh, wow, what a great question. I have gotten to meet Stan Lee a couple of times. The first time I met him was early in my career. And I was starstruck. I was, I was like, I... I was just in awe because Stan Lee is the, the biggest name in comics. He is a legend. So uh, the first time I met him was a little bit embarrassing. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> but the, 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 the most recent time I, I got a chance to meet, meet him and talk with him was at a Dallas comic book convention. And, I got, and, and now I've been in the industry for, for quite, quite, quite a bit longer. So I felt more, more like, you know, we're, 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 we're colleagues. Uh, especially now that I've drawn Spider-Man for at least about six years at that time. So I got a chance to let him know how much I enjoyed working on Spider-Man and uh, what an honor it, it has been to work with so many of the characters he created and co-created with some amazing artists. And so I reminded him of the time I first met him, which I didn't expect him to remember. I said, well, Stan, I was a bit starstruck. And he, he looks to me and he goes, rightfully so. <laughs> and he goes, and so we talked a little bit and I said how we'd met 15 years prior and uh, he said, Good to see you, Todd. And remember what I told you all those years ago. The head always goes on top. I said, thank you, Stan. You, you, your, your advice saved my career. And he goes, well, I'll see you again in another 10 years. And uh, so it, he was very, 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 a very sweet man, very sharp, very funny. Uh, it was definitely, a, I was honored to get a chance to meet with him a couple of times uh, in my career in life. Thank you for the question, Ava. So I got another friend right up here that has a question for you. Uh, do me first, tell us about your name. Basil. And Hi, Basil. Uh, and my question is, do you always use paper or do you use a stylus and, and digital? 
Uh, I use both. Um, I start uh, when I was showing the Spidey Schools app pages, that initial sketch stage, the, the very first time I, I, I sketch up images, I do that digitally, which makes it very convenient for me if I need to resize a panel as I'm sketching, I realize, oh, I need to make this panel bigger or this panel smaller, I need to move this, so, this panel to the left or to the right, I can select it and, and slide it digitally instead of erasing and trying to redraw it and then erasing again, trying to redraw it. I can just sketch it out once, slide it back and forth, enlarge it. Once that's, once I get the sketch work in place, I can then print it out onto my board and do the tighter pencils and tighter inks. Uh, so, so utilizing both has really made my, my work this opened me up to a lot more, a lot, uh, a, lot, a lot of other ideas and ways to approach my, my craft. Thank you for the great question, Basil. Anyone else have a question currently here for Todd? I'd love to get some more input out there. I see a gentleman right here in the uh, front middle that looks like he's got a, a great ponderance, if I may use the word ponderance. Uh, right over here, Todd, we got our friend. His name is? Will. Hi, Will. Hey, how's it going? Um, so, who is your most favorite portrayal of Spider-Man in all of the movies? Or who do you think is the most accurate? Oh, most accurate portrayal. I think uh, all three guys who have portrayed Spidey, uh, Tobey Maguire, um, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland have all done fantastic jobs as Peter Parker in Spider-Man. My personal favorite, Tom Holland. I like a, a smaller, skinnier Spidey, but I, love, I think all three, all three guys have done fantastic work. Even even Nicholas Hammond, if we want to go all the way back to the 70s, for us old timers who might remember those made for TV movies. Thanks for the question, Bob. <laughs> I appreciate you chose Tom Holland because that's a Disney movie, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got it right down here also in the front. Uh, hi, tell them uh, what's your name? My name's Marissa. Hi, Marissa. Hello. Um, my question is, you were talking before about how you have somebody else who colors them in on Photoshop. Yes. Is there ever a time where you colored it in, or is it like standard practice for somebody else to be a colorist while you're the sketcher? Well, uh, the comic books come out monthly, so they have to be come out on a regular monthly deadline, and it's pretty time consuming creating a comic. So, so breaking up the chores to different people uh, helps the production process move along in a more timely fashion so the comic books can come out in time. I've been doing more studying and practicing now that I'm working on a tablet to uh, learn how to color digitally so I can utilize colors more in, in what I do. But working with Rochelle, she's so amazing. She's so, she's so adept at what she does. Uh, she makes, she's, she's been a great teammate to work with while I do the line art and, and, and working with her for the colors. So, but, but learning how to do colors is, is another uh, tool I'd like to have in my artistic arsenal. And I've got a young friend right here. He looks so excited. He's up here at, uh, on your right-hand side, Todd. Uh, do me a favor, young man. Tell Todd, what's your name? Ion. Hi, Ion. And Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, what's his favorite Spider-Man? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a great, great question. Uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I love that they have so many different spider people in there. Uh, I'm, I'm probably one of the biggest Spider-Ham fans. Spider-Ham is Peter Porker, the Spider-Pig uh, character, Spider-Ham. That character's been around since the 80s, since I was a kid. And I had every issue of Spider-Ham, and the first time my name appears in a Marvel comic is in a fan letter I wrote to the Spider-Ham comic that got printed in the letters column. I can't remember which issue it was, but I remember being about 14, 15 years old and reading the latest issue and seeing my letter printed in the letter column. I just flipped out. I ran through the house, Mom, Dad, they printed my letter in Spider-Ham, and my parents were a little confused, like, what? What, what, what are you talking about? So, uh, so I, I'd probably say I'm, I'm probably a pretty big Spider-Ham fan, but Miles is really cool too. Of course, I also like Peter Parker and, and Spider-Man. There's so many great characters. They're all so different and so cool and, and, and cool different costumes. But thank you so much, Ion. Great question. I like the choice, Todd. Spider Pam smells like bacon here, doesn't it? <laughs> I got a friend all the way up here at the top near the front. Tell everyone, uh, what's your name? Lila. Now, Lila, you're dressed up as something very interesting. Tell everyone, what's your dress up like, Lila? I don't really know. <laughs> I love that. That's fun right there. Uh, Lila, can you ask uh, Todd a question? What's your favorite Marvel hero? Oh, gosh, uh, that's a great question. I have uh, a lot of favorites. Spider-Man's probably been my longest favorite because I discovered him at H4 and I've been a fan ever since, so I've probably been the longest time a Spider-Man fan. 
I'm a big fan of The Thing from Fantastic Four, the big orange Rocky guy, I think he's really cool, and I'm a huge, huge X-Men fan. I love the X-Men, and I hope they get to introduce the X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe soon. Uh, and my favorite X-Men of all the X-Men is uh, a girl named Kitty Pryde who can walk through, the wa through walls. I think she's super awesome. She's smart, she's funny, she's a leader, she's courageous, and she's got a pet dragon, so you can't go wrong with a pet dragon. I like the choice. I'm a big X-Men friend as well. I, I remember all the X-Men TV shows. Does anyone remember the X-Men TV shows like the, from the 90s, X-Men Evolution? Todd, did you watch those shows too? Oh yes, absolutely. And X-Men Evolution is probably my favorite of all of them because they have five awesome seasons. Agreed. I, my heart's soaring like Kitty Pride right now. <laughs> so we got another friend right up here. Uh, tell everyone what's your name. Megan. Hi, Megan. Um, my question is, have you ever met any of the actors? And if you have, who did you meet? Who have I met? Well, I've gotten to go to some of the movie premieres because I live in Southern California, so I've gotten to see the past seven or eight Marvel movies at the premiere, and I get to see the actors, though I haven't had a chance to talk to them. I was like this far from Doctor Strange. Then I think Cumberbatch, he like walked right past me and was like, oh my gosh, I'm Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I gave up my seat to Ant-Man on a couch. I got to go to the Civil War after party, which I don't often get to go to the after parties. I got to go to the after party, and, and Paul Rudd was coming in, and uh, my wife and I gave up the seat to him and his wife. So that's the closest I've gotten to meeting any of the actors. Uh, but I hope they get a chance to... Uh, uh, actually, I think I talked with uh, Agent Coulson once, uh, Clark Gregg. He and I both share the same birthday, April 2nd. So this April 2nd, make sure you wish for a uh, happy birthday to me and Clark Gregg. <laughs> Maybe the two of you can have a joint birthday party someday. That'd be the best cake oh, that, ever. I, I would love that. So we got another question here from a gentleman, uh, festively dressed like Iron Man. Good sir, tell everyone, what's your name? Uh, Leo. Hi, Leo. Hi. Leo, uh, do us here, what's your question? How long does it take to uh, complete a whole comic book, all the way from the beginning to uh, publishing? Let's see. Uh, from, from the time that the writer and editor start the story to the time that the colorist and letterer uh, finish the colors and, and word balloons, and my job being in the middle, it takes about, I'd say it takes about six to eight weeks. And I get four weeks to do my job, which is all the line art like you see me doing here uh, today. So uh, so yeah, four, <laughs> about four weeks for me, and then maybe two weeks for the writer prior to that, and then the, the colorist was working right behind me, so she, uh, or he, depending on who the colorist is, gets uh, about uh, two to four weeks to do their job as well, depending on how the schedule shakes down. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Leah. So we got another friend right up here with this wonderful pop t-shirt that's got all the splash characters here. Uh, right here at the top, tell everyone, what is your name, sir? James. Hi, James. James has a very interesting question about interpretations here. Why don't you go for it, James? Uh, what's your favorite character from MC, like the most accurate, most best portrayal you think? Uh, which character that I feel has been the best portrayal from the comics to the motion yeah. pictures? Uh, I think I think Marvel has done such an amazing job with their their movies that every character feels so believable as the the character from the comics, whether they uh, might have changed them a little bit. Um, even then, it still feels like the character. I think Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange is pretty spot on, pretty amazing. I can say that for Captain America. I can say that for the Hulk, Spider Man. Black Widow, everyone feels so so spot on that it, I couldn't say that there was one that that outshines the other. Very true, did I get it very true? <laughs> I think but thank we, you for your question. I think we got some people definitely supporting you. Now, I, I'd love to fit in, it looks like we're kind of at the, at the uh, finishing of this drawing, which looks really amazing, right everybody? Yeah. <laughs> it's looking really good. Uh, I do have a young friend here dressed like the star spangled man with a plan. Young sir, uh, right here at the top, tell us what is your name? Chandler. Hi, Chandler. So, Chandler, tell everyone here what is your question? Do you have any characters that you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any characters I don't know? Um, well, I've been reading Marvel comic books since 1984. So that's about, my math might be a little off, but maybe about 35, 36 years, or somewhere around there. So I've read a lot, a lot, a lot of the characters. I probably would say some characters I haven't got a chance to read as much of as I have other characters. Maybe be, might be characters like Daredevil. He's, he's a character that I'm familiar with. I've read some of his stories, but not like a lot of his stories. So he's a character I could stand to get to know a little bit better. Um, 
Yeah, I'd say, I think, I think I'm gonna say Daredevil is a character that I know, but I could definitely get to know better. That sounds like a good use of uh, downloading Netflix and watching on the series, right? <laughs> That's cool. right. I'm, I'm a big fan of that Netflix series, man. Jessica Jones is one of my absolute favorites. Do you like Jessica Jones, Doug? Uh, yes, yes. I haven't had a chance to see Jessica Jones, but I like the actress who portrays her, and I like David Tennant as well, who plays the, uh, uh, the Kilgram. 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 Kilgram, yeah, that's that's a real gritty portrayal right there. Well, I got two gentlemen right here uh, that look like they're ready to ask a question. Hey, do me a favor, young friend. Tell Todd, what's your name? Augie. Hi, Augie. Augie, what's your question, friend? I made a comic one time, and I don't think I drew all the pages. <laughs> you don't think you drew all the pages? Did you have someone team up with you? Did you write it and your friend helped you draw it? Look, right now he's currently pointing at the gentleman sitting right next to him. Oh uh, yeah? So what's your name? Uh, Justin. I might help with some of the um, like word bubbles and stuff. Excellent. That's what we call a collaboration. That's very common in comics. Stan Lee collaborated with a lot of great artists to, to make his comics, like Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Gil Kane. So, so you're in good company, Augie. There you you go, could be man. the future Stan Lee. There it is, the future Stanley here at Jermaine's today in the Buena Vista Theater. I, I, I thought for a second that he was going to ask you if you could draw out the rest of this comic book. <laughs> right, maybe a little free, freelance work in my future there? I think maybe. I think all you will pay you in popcorn because this is well, fast up with it right now. I like it. I got another gentleman right up here. He's got quite the red shirt as I'm jumping over steps to try and get over to him. Uh, young sir, tell everyone what's your name. Hi, Joseph. Joseph, what's your question? How many comic books do you own? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, remember how I said I've been collecting comic books for about 35 plus years? And, the, and, and you store them in long boxes? I have maybe 30 in my garage, five in my office, and then several stacks that have yet to be filed in my office, in the bedroom, in the living room. There's some in the freezer, and my wife keeps asking, Todd, what is this issue of Iron Fist doing in the freezer? It's like, you gotta keep them cool and dry, so I, it's, it's mint. I'm joking about that. I don't put my comics in the freezer anymore. Um, so, um, I probably have maybe 20,000 comics, I would guess. Actual comic books, yeah. Wow, that's a lot. Do you ever uh, at one time end up trying to make a frozen pizza and instead cook a comic book? Yes, yes, it ruined my issue of uh, Avengers number four, which I'm, you know, still, still heartbroken about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, we do have that amazing drawing. It. My yes. goodness, that oh, looks so great. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is going home with somebody. And you know what? I think it's time for us to figure out who that is. Now, everyone, do us a favor. Do us a favor. Of, ooh, a couple of tickets falling out right there. Make sure they're all in. Uh, Todd, do us a favor. Can you reach into the box and pull out our big winner here? I would be honored. Okay, good luck, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. I hope I... Hope I I know I will pick a winner. I was like, I hope I pick a winner. <laughs> we won't fail in that. Well, here's the good news. They're on a Disney cruise, so they're all winners to us. Absolutely, absolutely. So we have the number 440-607. Is that a person in the house? Is anyone there that has that ticket? 440-607? No? Maybe. They're, they're being very shy right now. <laughs> Well, let's see it. Going once, going twice. If that's you, stand up, make some noise. 440607. 607. Look at those last three numbers. They left the line. Maybe. Oh, that's right. Let's go and take another one. Okay, okay. I'll let you hold on to that. <laughs> Mix them up real good. All right. This, this, obviously. Oh, let's, let's make sure everyone has a fair shake there. Some of them have slipped out the bottom. Make sure no one got left out. All right. There. <laughs> everyone gets a fair shake. Okay. Four four zero six six two. Oh, is it? Were you close? Six six two. Oh, we have a winner! Awesome! Congratulations! We did it! Woo! Well, we're going to make sure we get that drawing to you. Feel free to come on down after the show. But friends, do me a favor and give a big round of applause for our amazing Marvel Comic Artist. Thank you! Thank you! Woo! Absolutely, man. Have a great day at Marvel Day Go up there and enjoy your fun things. We have another one here later on today. Also, we have our great USO show in Fathoms at 8 o'clock, followed by our Marvel Superman Challenge. Go have a great Marvel Day and see friends. Thanks for joining us.
And there we go. It was a lot of fun to do, and it's been a great time here on the Disney Cruise Line's Marvel Day at Sea Adventure. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. And feel free to leave a thumbs up and a comment. And if you're on any of the social media, all my social media links are listed in the video description below. Thanks so much for tuning in. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Corey, I'm going to toss it back to you for Q&A. Yes, uh, so I, if I'm uh, right in remembering, Todd, you actually do some of these things uh, in live person in other places as well, right? Uh, comic book conventions, YouTube live broadcasts, absolutely. Yeah, so and I imagine in those live broadcasts, you often get questions as well. And what I was uh, really amazed by is that before, he was doing all of these uh, and answering the questions at the same time. So what I would like to pose to you is we're going to play a little game. Do, do you like games, Don? I love games, yes. <laughs> what a coincidence. I feel like you might be in good company. Hi, okay, everybody. <laughs> So here's what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to put one minute on the clock, and I've got a series of rapid response questions here. Your goal is try to answer as many of these questions as you possibly can. Now, we've had a few other of our Marvel Masters come through this season. I can tell you that the top number so far is 10 questions in Ooh. one minute. Todd, do you think you can do this? I hope I can. I'm going to do my best. Were they drawing when they answered those questions? They, they were not. So you have an extra <laughs> way to count. Okay. So let's see, we're gonna put the one minute on your clock. Your time begins now. Uh, what is the best Marvel TV show ever made? Uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Are you Team Cap or Team Iron Man? I'm Team Cap. What superhero would you like to see in the future on the movie screen? All the X-Men. If you could choose a radioactive animal to bite you and give you superpowers, what animal would it be? A dolphin. What is the best Marvel video game? Uh, I don't play video games. Choose a super team. Is it the Avengers, Defenders, Guardians, or X-Men? Oh, X-Men. Awesome Mix Volume 1 or Volume 2? Uh, volume 1. Name three Spider-Man villains. Uh, Sin not Sinestro. Uh, Sandman, Electro, and Venom. What exactly is shawarma? Shawarma is, uh, is roasted lamb. What is, what is your favorite <laughs> post credit scene in a Marvel film? Uh, I, uh, Ten seconds. Infinity War. Oh, no, Ant-Man and Wasp. Ant-Man and Wasp. Who is the most powerful superhero? Uh, uh, Legion from the X-Men. And what is the ending to Avengers Endgame? The end. <laughs> Do a round of applause, friends. Round of applause. You got through all the questions. That's 11 questions, Todd. Congratulations.